The stylohyoid muscle and the digastric muscle is going to be forming the muscles of the first plane. In this section, we'll be covering in detail about this digastric muscle. We'll be studying about the anterior and posterior belly of the digastric muscle. Along with that, we'll also be studying about the stylohyoid muscle. So firstly, we have the digastric muscle, which is made up of the posterior and anterior bellies. And this muscle is strap-like muscle and it is united by an intermediate tendon. So it helps to depress the mandible when mouth is open. So when the mouth is open, it's going to be causing a depression of the mandible bone and it pulls the hyoid bone upward during the deglutition. So this is the digastric muscle. It has two bellies, the posterior belly and the anterior belly. And it is basically its function is to cause the depression of the mandible bone when that mouth, when your mouth is open and to pulling the hyoid bone downward during the deglutition during this process. So this digastric muscle has two bellies, the posterior and anterior one. It is basically a strap like muscle in the form of this, these straps just present. And it is united by an intermediate tendon. Now digastric muscle is going to be originating from the digastric fossa on the lower border of mandible bone near the symphysis ment. So it has to be originating from the uh, from the digastric fossa which is present on the lower belly of the of the mandible bone so on below the mandible bone we have this uh, muscle it, it is the anterior belly of the muscle and this one is the posterior belly of the muscle so from the digastric fossa on the lower border of mandible near the symphysis it is going to be originating and it enters downward and backward on the mylohyoid muscle to be added on, on in to the intermediate tendon. So we started that this this muscle is being joined together by the by an intermediate tendon. So from as it's originate from the lower border of the mandible near the symphysis ment, it just comes downward and backward on the mylohyoid to be added on that intermediate tendon. So it crosses that mylohyoid muscle, it goes to the backward direction of that muscle and being added to the intermediate tendon. So this is, uh, it has two bellies, the anterior belly is present here and the posterior one is originating from the lower border of the mandible. Then posterior belly of the digastric muscle is originating from the mastoid notch of the temporal bone. So it, it begins from the temporal bone. We have the mastoid notch present on the temporal. This is the, the posterior belly of the digastric. So it's originating from the from the, the mastoid notch of the temporal bone and it's in, inserted or it enters downward and forward between the carotid triangle. This is the carotid triangle. So it's coming downward between the carotid triangle below and behind and get Yes, and the digastric triangle above. So above we have the digastric triangle and in front. So it is going to, it has its origin from the mastoid notch of the temporal bone. When it's originated from the mastoid notch of the temporal bone, it is coming downward and forward in between the carotid triangle. In this carotid triangle, it has to, it's present between this carotid triangle and behind we, behind this, this carotid triangle is present below and behind, whereas this digastric triangle is present above and in front. So above and in front, we have the digastric triangle and below we have the below and behind we have the carotid triangle. Now the nerve supply to this is the posterior abdomen. We have it grows from the mesoderm of second pharyngeal arch supplied by the facial nerve. So nerve supply to the posterior abdomen. Nerve supplies from the posterior abdomen that grows from the mesoderm of second pharyngeal arch and supplied by the facial nerve. So major sub nerve supply to this area is by the facial nerve. This the anterior and the posterior belly of the digastric muscles they receives the nerve supply from facial nerve, anterior abdomen. From anterior abdomen, it grows from first pharyngeal arch. From the posterior abdomen, it was originating from the mesoderm of second pharyngeal arch. But from anterior abdomen, it grows from the first pharyngeal arch. Now it's supplied by mylohyoid nerve, a branch of inferior alveolar nerve from the mandibular nerve. So majorly we have the mandibular nerve which has a, a branch of inferior alveolar nerve and it is supplied by the mylohyoid nerve.
So nerve supply is from the two uh, regions, that is the posterior abdomen and we have the interior abdomen. The posterior one grows from mesoderm of second pharyngeal arch and from the spatial nerve. The anterior abdomen grows from first pharyngeal arch supplied by the mylohyoid nerve which is a branch of inferior alveolar nerve from mandibular nerve. Now connections of the posterior belly of the digastric muscles. So the connections that we have is, this is basically the posterior belly of the digastric muscle. As we see that in front we have this, this is the accessory nerve, we have the vagus nerve and we have the hypoglossal nerve. We also have this the carotid arteries, the internal carotid artery, external carotid artery, which are originating from the common carotid artery. Then we have this ascending pharyngeal artery, facial nerves. Firstly, it was present behind this nerve, then it crosses the posterior border and comes in front. And we have this lingual artery present behind. Then we have the hypoglossal nerve present here. So posteriorly, we have this occipital artery, we have the spinal accessory nerve, we have the upper sternomastoid branch of the occipital artery, the lower sternomastoid branch of the occipital artery, the internal jugular vein and the accessory nerves and posterior oligular artery are present uh, on, the, uh, on the superior and anterior side of this digastric muscle. So posterior belly of digastric muscle has anteriorly multiple structures which majorly include this vagus nerve, we have this internal external carotid arteries, this hypoglossal nerve, ascending pharyngeal artery, facial artery, lingual artery and hypoglossal nerve. We have the posteriorly, we have the sternomastoid branch of occipital artery, we have spinal accessory artery, occipital artery itself and posterior auricular and internal jugular veins are present anteriorly. Now we have this difference between the anterior belly and the posterior belly. Now anterior belly is unipinnate and the posterior belly is bipinnate. The anterior belly originates from the first pharyngeal arch. The second, the posterior belly originates from second pharyngeal arch. The anterior belly is supplied by the mylohyoid, whereas the posterior one is supplied by the facial nerve. That is the nerve supply we've started that uh, it, the facial nerve was originating from the second pharyngeal arch from the anterior abdomen. So this is the difference. We have three differences. The anterior one has the unipinnate. It is unipinnate in shape and the posterior belly is bipinnate. That is the shape of the muscle fibers. That is how they are arranged. Then anterior belly is originating from, developing from first pharyngeal arch. The uh, other one is originating from second pharyngeal arch. Now it is supplied by the mylohyoid nerve and posterior one is supplied by the facial nerve. The stylohyoid muscle. This one, this muscle is the stylohyoid muscle that is originating from the styloid process. It has its posterior surface, so posterior surface of stylo from the styloid process of the temporal bone it is originating, then it has to be inserting or fitting into the hyoid bone. So you see that it's originating from the styloid process coming all the way down and being inserted into this hyoid bone in junction between body and greater cornum. That is the very localized position. They have told you that they have to be. This muscle has to be fitted into the body uh, of the hyoid bone and greater cornum. The tendon divides into the two sides. Nerve supply is grows from second arch. Facial nerve supply. The action is it pulls the hyoid bone upward and backward and elongate the floor of the mouth. It has to be elongating the floor of the mouth and it's pulling the hyoid back bones backward and upward. So this is the stylohyoid muscle originating from styloid process of the temporal bone coming down inserting into the hyoid bone into the body and the cornum, greater cornu, and then divides into two. Then we have the nerve supply which is from second pharyngeal arch which is the facial nerve and it has to be when it contract pushes or it pulls the hyoid bone to the backward direction and elongates the floor of the mouth. So this was about section two where we started in detail about the about this um, this first phase of the muscles that the this is made up of the digastric muscle it has the two bellies we've started the original insertion how this anterior belly and the posterior belly being originated and being supplied we also started about the stylohyoid muscle which has its own original insertion the nerve supply and action we started between the differences uh, between the anterior and the posterior belly of the digastric muscle so i hope it is really clear to you now thank you for watching skydia.com